In this video, I'm going to discuss a gearbox design that uh, Lionel began using to the best of my knowledge in 2011. And from what I could tell, this started with the first uh, Legacy K4 locomotive uh, that was derived from the old K-Line tooling. And they've added two extra gears into the gearbox, making it more complex. And personally, made me kind of question the reliability aspect of it, specifically because the K4 I purchased had gearbox issues right out of the box. I went one lap around the layout, and I started hearing some chattering, and I happened to look around, and then I noticed that the secondary gear shaft was walking out of the chassis. So I sent it back to Lionel and got it repaired, and it came back. Mind you, I love that locomotive. Uh, the whistle steam always worked great. Sounds were great. Ran super smooth. I had it a few more years, not a ton of run time. I got kids. I get busy, you know, weekend here and there. And after a while, uh, I just happened to look at that because I keep an eye on it. And here's an example of it on my um, light Mikado or my heavy Mikado from Lionel, the legacy one. Uh, New York Central, and it's you. If you look between the spokes here, you can make out the bushing, as well as the secondary shaft. And so I kept an eye on this because I had a problem with my K4. And uh, over time, I began to notice excess play between the shaft and the bushing. I could tell the bushing was becoming oblonged, and eventually it got to the point where I put a Q-tip in here and I'd start to get a little metal shavings out of there. So whether the repair was done incorrectly or the bushing is not, you know, there's not enough bronze in the bushing and maybe it was more brass, but that kind of raised a red flag for me. I ended up par parting with the locomotive because I didn't want to keep it long enough to have gearbox failure. And the only way you're looking at replacing this, you have to order the whole chassis from Lionel. I'm sure that's a few hundred dollars. And then someone's got to got all the locomotive and put everything back on the new chassis. And then where are you going to be at in a couple of years? Lionel has been adding this design into most of their locomotives. Uh, I say most because I think there's a few exceptions. The scale Hudson's, I don't think have it. Um, I don't think that Vision Niagara has it. Uh, most of your other stuff, the Vision Northerns have it. The regular Northerns have it. The Mountains have it. The Pacifics have it. The K4s have it. Uh, the two six O's have it. The two eight O's have it. Um, I'm sure I'm missing something here. The best way to know is if you're interested in a locomotive or curious if it has this gearbox setup, you just look between the spokes. And this axle here is the one that's directly powered from the motor. This is where the gearbox is in here. You can usually tell that is where the grease screw would be on the bottom. And that's where you'll see this bushing about midway in the chassis, somewhere between, you know, the motors up here and the, the driven axle down here. Another example of it is in my H10. While I have it here, yeah, let's move this over, and you can see it right back here. And part of the problem to me is the extra gears, and then the other issue is these are brass or bronze bushings, presumably, and there's no mention of lubing these in the owner's manual. And I've been putting a drop of lube on either side. You know, light oil, your choice. I prefer Labelle 102. It's a little heavier, but the light oil of your choice. Because the other problem is this is so uh, high up from the bottom of the gearbox. I question whether or not when you put gear grease in the bottom of the gearbox, it actually transfers all the way up to the worm. And that's my next concern. So it's almost imperative that you have a very small needle filler, needle point filler to get in the gearbox so that actually the gearbox is getting midway to get to the other two gears. Because this, this intermediate shaft has two gears on it. One gear is turned by the worm and the other gear turns the main axle gear. So there's not complete connection from the worm all the way to the axle. So if you could have grease on two gears and not the other two. Um, you know, the, traditionally a gearbox was two gears. You had the worm gear on the motor and then you had one big gear on the axle and then you were done. Bulletproof design 
as to why Lionel did this, I presume maybe something, you know, you would assume more gears, gears it down, better slow speed performance, maybe to compensate from uh, lack in the motor. I know there's been talk that Lionel is no longer uh, able to use Pittman's because Pittman has priced themselves out of the market. So they use Canon motors, which aren't as robust and as durable. And there have been issues with some of those uh, reportedly, some of the brushes coming loose and jamming on a commentator and, and taking out the locomotive electronics. I haven't experienced this. I only have a few modern locomotives, so I haven't experienced this. On the other side, getting back to my K4, uh, I have heard several reports of people with the same issue I have to where the gearboxes failed. You know, the gears would start grinding, and then there you're at, you're at replacing the chassis. So I highly recommend, as great as those locomotives are, the 6-11328 and the 11327, and I believe they had a couple conventional versions. I would be very cautious and very hesitant to purchase one of those secondhand. Uh, to me, you, you have a time issue, possibly, and the best thing to do would be to get in there and take a look... I'll use that heavy mic because it's a little easier to see. Get in there and take a look at the shaft inside the bushing. It's my little flashlight. The best that you can. And, you know, if you if you rock the locomotive back and forth, you'll be able to see. And if the shaft rocks back and forth inside the bushing, then you know you have a wear issue. Again, tough to see on my video here. But if, if there's a lot, if that you can visibly see that bushing in there when it becomes oblong, then you know you have a problem. On this locomotive, it's hard to tell, but the shaft basically goes side to side which in my opinion, opinion is another minor issue, and I will elaborate on that in a second. I can remove the bottom plate on the H10 and show you guys how this gearbox works. Okay, so here we go. On the H10, it's really easy to get the bottom plate off. It's older tooling that Lionel designed where the bottom plate is separate, and there's, there's four screws across the bottom of the chassis, Plus you remove the two collectors and the whole bottom plate comes off and here we are. I know this is tough to see, but inside the gearbox here, you can't see the worm because it's all the way in the very bottom because the locomotive is inverted, obviously. So here's your axle gear. Here's the gear on the shaft that's turned by the worm gear. And then there's another gear down here next to it that you can barely see. And it is actually turning the axle gear. I'll try and put a little light in here. Oops. Not sure if that helps or not. But you can just barely make it out. Sorry about my hand there. You can just barely make it out between the two gears here. It's down there. You can see it there. The problem I have with this is there's lateral slop in the axle, which is which is a given, but then you also have slop in this shaft. And when the shaft is all the way one direction, which I believe that's the direction it gets shoved by the worm gear, and if you're in a situation where you're going around a turn and this, this axle is going this way, you've got less than half contact between the gear down here and this larger axle gear. And it runs fine, but I think there's, you know, if these were tighter together, some spacers, some shims, uh, more reliability. Maybe this won't be a problem ever, maybe it would. But fortunately, this engine, you can at least see what's going on. The majority of the rest, if not all of them, you have no access to this bottom gearbox, so you really can't see it. And this is nice, like I said, for greasing. Because now you can shoot some grease on this gear, and this will make it to the intermediate gear down here. And then you put grease on this gear, and that gets up to the worm. And I'm just a little leery 
your grease holes here. So unless you shoot a lot of grease in the very bottom, you're not going to get it up there to that worm gear, in my opinion. So this is my concern. There's a lot, you know, more moving parts, uh, more risk of things could go wrong. But uh, I'm not here to say it's a bad design. I'm just saying it's a design. It's I'm sure it improves the operating characteristics, but longevity. I'm hesitant to buy any more of these locomotives. I've been focusing more on some of the older stuff, the TMC stuff that maybe doesn't have the operating finesse, but I got a ways to go before I retire and I'm really going to sit down here and spend more time. And I want to make sure everything that I invest in now is still running 10, 15 years from now. And my opinion, the jury is still out on this design. Certainly there was an issue with those legacy K4s, whether or not they addressed it and the subsequent releases like my heavy Mikado, it's very possible. It's very possible that those, uh, bushings were the wrong too much brass in them as opposed to more bronze it's possible that uh the shaft was made incorrectly maybe there was a burr on the shaft and it ate the bushing up so the jury's still kind of out but again i have my reservations and time will tell about this design but my in short term my concern would be get a needle oiler between those spokes get a drop or two of oil on those bushings in the side of the chassis that the secondary shaft turns in and get a needle uh, grease gun or grease syringe. Make sure you get the grease to all these gears in the gearbox. And then we'll see what time tells. But uh, like I said, I'm, I'm kind of hesitant with the new stuff. Personally, it's pricing out of my budget anyway. So this all comes at a good time. And I'm really starting to appreciate some of Lionel's older locomotives because I'm finding... Some of the sound packages where maybe the quality isn't quite as great, but the volume is louder and there's more variety. It seems like lately Legacy is kind of going the way MTH where, you know, the chuffs are all the same. The bells are all the same. Things are starting to sound the same. And maybe that's true for the actual prototype anyway, but I like to have variety on my layout. So that's my coverage of this gearbox and let's hope uh, that Lionel has this figured out and Ultimately, we just have smoother running locomotives. Hope everybody has a great weekend.